Hello everybody, this is Kenton Taylor Howard and this is part two of my animation tutorial on some basics of Unity's 2D sprite based animation system. In the previous tutorial, I walked you through some setup steps where we got this cat sprite into our game. We set up some animations for it and we set up some uh, content inside of Unity that will allow us to control those animations through code. Uh, if you're following this as part of the tutorial 1.5 assignment, you'll also want to keep in mind that there's a sound component to this as well that I reviewed in a previous tutorial video. So if you haven't set up this, that sound content yet, you might want to do that, especially since we'll be relying on the cat controller script that we created in the last video that we based on the sound controller uh, content from the sound tutorial. So, so this is kind of part three of the video series on tutorial 1.5 if you're working through it as part of that set of assignments. Uh, but what I want to show you today is how to actually control the content that we set up for our animation in code. So in the previous tutorial, we created this idle animation. When we hit play, that idle animation is going to play. And we have a walk and run animation, but right now we can't actually get into those walk and in, uh, run animations in the game. If we can go in through our animator in Unity and set the state to one and two of that condition that we created, and that will allow us to move to those different animations. So right now I'm in state two, and we assigned that to the run animation in the previous video, which is why the cat's running right now. But we want to be able to actually associate that with in-game actions. So we want to be able to, for example, when our prayer player presses a key, move into the walk animation, and when our player presses a different key, move into the run animation. When they let go of the keys, maybe stop the animations. So we're going to find out today basically how to control all of that stuff through code. And what we're going to be working with is the cat controller script that I mentioned in the previous video. This is based on the sound tutorial that we created already. So I'm going to pop that script open in Unity just so you can take a look at it. And you'll see that this script already has some contents inside of it. In particular, it's got a series of if statements inside of the update function. And those if statements allow us to play different music clips. So we set it up so when we hold down the W button, we play a music clip. When we let go of the W button, we stop playing it. When we hold down a different R button, R, we play a second music cl clip. When we let go of that second button, R, we stop playing it. And there's some code down here at the very bottom to control looping and things like that as well. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is adding some code to this to control our animations. And if you don't have this code already set up, you might want to go ahead and go to the sound tutorial and bring that code over because it will make your life a lot easier than trying to write all these if statements as we go along. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a variable to hold our animator. And what we're going to do is type at the very top of our script under the line that says public audio source music source. We're going to make an animator variable. So let me do that real quick. So you'll notice I typed animator anim. What I basically did is made an animator variable and called it anim. And now we're going to get our animator from inside of Unity. We're going to be using a function in Unity called getComponent that's really commonly used to access components on game objects. And in this particular situation, what we're going to be doing is accessing the animator on our game object. So what we're going to do is write a little bit of code to do that. It's very similar to creating a rigid body for a game object if you've ever done that before. So you'll notice what I typed inside of start was anim equals get component animator and then a set of parentheses, essentially. And what I'm doing is basically saying my animator variable is equal to the animator on this game object. So I want to be accessing that animator. Again, this is a really common process you're going to use a lot in Unity. The next thing I need to do is write some code that will control the state of my integer. So if you remember correctly, what we did inside of Unity in our animator is created a parameter called state. It's set to zero. And then we set up these different transitions that represent different values for state. So when state is set to zero, we should be in the idling animation. When state is set to one, we should end up in the walking animation. When state is set to two, we should be in the running animation. And now what we're going to do is actually write our code so that that happens. 
And it's only going to take a couple lines of code that we need to add, so it's actually not going to be too difficult. And that's because we've already set up some if statements inside of update that correspond to like the W and R keys in a previous tutorial. So if you haven't set those if statements up, that's going to take a little bit of extra time at this point. But if you already have those in place and you've already added the sound code to them, you're just going to add some lines to the if statements that you've already got. So I'm going to go into update and I'm going to go to the if statement that's if input dot get key down key code W and I'm going to add an extra line of code to it. So what did I add? I added a line of code that said nm.set integer, and then inside of parentheses I've got state and one. So what I'm essentially telling my game is when the key code W is being held down, so when my user is pressing down the W key, I should be seeing the walking animation. I should be in state one, which we said is going to correspond to the walking animation, right? So I've also got some code here, input, get key up, key code W, and that stops my music currently. So right now what's going to happen is they hold down the W key, they hear my first music clip, and they see the animation start walking. So what I'm going to do is turn the animation back into the idle animation when the music stops. So when they let go of the W key, we go back to our idling animation and our music stops playing. So I'm just going to move down to the next if statement and write a second set of code for that. So I've got input, inside of the input, get key up, key code W if statement, I added that line of code that says anim set integer state zero. And what that's going to do is set us back into the idling animation and turn our music off at the same time. So let's go ahead and save this and test it inside of Unity real quickly. It's always good to take a look at things and make sure they're working properly. Let's hit play. I'm holding down the W key, we get music and the music stops. So we're walking and playing music when we hold down W. The music stops and we go back into idle. We let go of W, so it looks like we've got everything set up correctly. So now all we need to really do is go back into our C-sharp code and write the relevant code to take care of this on all the other animations. So I'm gonna cut and paste this line of code right here. So I'm pasting that line of code that says anim.set integer state one inside of the if input dot get key down key code r if statement. So this is the if statement that's basically checking whether or not our player is holding down the run button r. And instead, I want to go into state two because that should be our running animation. And when they let go of r, what am I going to add? Inside of the if input dot get key up key code r if statement, I'm adding a second line of code that says anim dot set integer state zero. So I was just cutting, cutting and pasting and changing a couple little values inside of the cut and pasted lines of code. So let's go ahead and hit save. Let's jump back over into Unity. And let's make sure we test that one. So we got a running animation and our run music plays. We let go, we get nothing. Our walk animation plays. We let go, we get nothing. If we're holding down walk, and then we hold down R, we can actually go into the running animation from the walking animation. So, so it looks like we've got everything set up properly. If you have followed the three tutorial videos that I've posted in web courses for tutorial 1.5, where you should be at this point is essentially you should have the ability to play an audio clip when you hold down the uh, W key and get the walk animation on your cat, play a different audio clip when you hold down the R key and you should be getting the running animation on your cat, and when neither key is held down, you should be in the idle animation on your cat. So those are the three requirements for tutorial 1.5 if you're watching it as part of that assignment series. Essentially, you're going to need to do those things. And if you've done those things, if you've got working sound and you've got working animations for your cat, you should be in good shape on the tutorial. So I hope that this helped you understand how to work your way through coding animations in Unity, and I hope you have a great day.